Kelly Smith MBE from Watford, former England captain, won the Premier League with Arsenal. Kelly, I have to ask you, what are you most proud of? Uh, there's a number of things that I'm proud of within my um, football career. Um, first off was my first England cap when I was just turned 16. And um, that was a big honour for me and my family. I bet. And then reaching 100 caps because I never ever thought I would reach that figure in my life. And then um, playing in my first major tournament, which was the World Cup in 2007 in China. Wow. So career-wise, they're, they're probably the, my most favourite. And so we've got to mention, you know, I said at the beginning that you're from Watford. I understand you're from Garston. So growing up in school and Watford, what are your memories of, of that? Uh, well, well, I went to Francis Coombe School. Um, my parents still live in the house that I grew up in, in Garston, right near Garston Parade. Um, I had a fantastic childhood. My parents were very loving, very supportive of me playing football, especially my father. He would take me, um, you know, to training and to games. And I had a cousin, uh, Margaret, who, if my dad couldn't do that, she was very supportive and would drive me all over the, the town to, to play and perform. Um, so I had really fond memories of, of Watford. I, I'm actually a Watford season ticket holder, so I wow. go to their games um, when I can. Um, so, yeah, I've got really big ties to Watford still. So you're ranked the fourth best England goal scorer ever, beating David Beckham, close behind Wayne Rooney and Gary Lineker. So how obviously you've shone in your career. How hard has it been to shine in what what is becoming less of a male-dominated sport? But we can say that, right? <laughs> yeah, um, to me, I've never really viewed um, my sport as a, as a male sport. I've just got out and played football and tried to play as hard as I can and, and you know, play for Arsenal and England and win trophies. Um, I've never really looked at it and compared myself to the men's game. Brilliant. Um, I've won loads of honours, um, you know, got voted FIFA World Player of the Year two years in a row. Um, I got to meet Messi and Ronaldo in Switzerland at, at that event. So it was nice to be, you know, held alongside those um, icons, I guess, in the men's game and be put on a level platform with them. Um, but yeah, I've just gone about my own business. This little girl from from Garston what oh. had a dream and, and <laughs> was lucky enough to fulfil it. I love the way you've name dropped Messi and Ronaldo in there. Like, you know, just Messi and Ronaldo. <laughs> I can also drop in as well because this week we had a pretty big uh, mental health heads together launch with the Duke of Cambridge on Wednesday the heads up weekends where you know in February the football's coming together for the conversation around mental health I saw you with Prince William so that must have been pretty special it was yeah it was an, an event in in Paddington um, there was a couple of current players women's players there Farrah Williams Frank Kirby and some men's players I think it was Troy Deeney yep um, and Andros Townsend, just to name a couple. Uh, Tony, yeah, Tony Adams. Down. Don't forget Tony, Tony Adams. Tony Adams. <laughs> I was speaking to him for a while too. Yeah, I bet. To, me to do some work for his charity. Um, but yeah, no, it was, it was a great event. I think mental health is such a, an important issue to discuss and bring up. And the next two weekends, this weekend and the next weekend, you know, this campaign is, is all about um, starting a conversation about mental health and ask people how they're feeling and just try and help people out that are struggling. So I think it's great that the football can shine a light on people that have issues um, or problems at the minute. And I think it's great. I mean, obviously, it's being highlighted within the male sport, but the female side of it as well. And as you said, you don't see it as a as a divide. You know, you play football regardless of, of sex, gender or whatever. Um, and obviously, that message is is really important for everybody, isn't it? And, and not well, every, just in yeah. the football, you know. Everybody, you know, has, has struggles in their life. I, I've come out and said I... You know, had struggles with alcohol when I football was taken away from me when I couldn't play for three years. I really struggled with my mental health and um, going through a treatment program and having support from my friends and family and me really opening up really helped me come to terms with how low I was and depressed and I've come out the other side of it. And, you know, you can see physical pain, but you can't see internal mental health yeah. pain. And I think that's where... Um, this campaign is really going to help a lot of people. I believe the game is going to start a minute later than normal. So yeah. people uh, during that time will reflect on how they're feeling or, you know, engage with somebody during that time to see how they're doing. And what was the turning point for you when you had those really low points? What, what was the one thing? What advice would you give to someone who's going through that same right now? Talk. Um, I didn't at that time. I was very isolated and lonely and very inside my own head I didn't want to share I didn't want to talk to anybody about how I was feeling I was embarrassed um, I felt very low very depressed and um, you know I had suicidal thoughts 
where at my deepest, darkest times, um, but speak to people, you know, open up, tell people how you're feeling. Um, and that does um, start the process of, of releasing a lot of stuff that you hold on to. And it makes you, it does actually make you feel better to get it out. Fantastic. Now that your uh, footballing career is moving moving pace, I guess, I don't know what the term to use, but now you're doing a lot of uh, public speaking. So you've got the Watford FC Premier Network that you're going to be doing. Uh, you've also got the Hearts Chamber of Commerce Women in Leadership Conference that you're going to be doing as well. Uh, is this important now to spread your message? What are you telling people when you're speaking? Um, yeah, I'm just, uh, it's, it's stuff that I'm, I, I'm passionate about. Um, I still do a little bit of media work, punditry work in the men's and women's game. Um, but yeah, my message is just to, to dream big and believe in yourself. Um, you know, I think that was always something that I was had quite strong within my mindset. I wanted to be the best that I could be in my field. And the hard work and dedication, the setbacks that I had, I didn't give up. Um, you know, there was many times when I was on crutches and couldn't play the game for, you know, six to eight months. And I was very low. Um, on a number of occasions, I had four serious injuries um, on and off, and I didn't give up, and I just kept pushing and pushing and pushing and come back uh, better and stronger each time. Now and that's the kind of the message that I share. That's incredible. Now, as we're talking to you, uh, another uh, valid point, I think, you've got a, a couple of children in your life. In fact, you've got Lucia. Have I pronounced that right? Yeah, that's right. Who's correct. six months old, who's with you right now, you've been feeding. So you're you're also a now a mum, a working mum. How does how do you juggle? Oh, uh, that's a tough question. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, I think you have to be really um prepared, um get stuff ready way ahead of time. because um, my time is, is spent looking after them and then out working like an event tonight. I'm lucky enough that I've got a nanny who's coming in a, in a half an hour so I can start getting ready and and leave um but yeah it's time management um but a lot of my time is dedicated to them Rocco's two and a half so he's um, going through you know the terrible twos oh, the tantrums and stuff so I, I feel you times I'm, <laughs> I'm pulling my hair out but I'm managing you know when I was just playing football it was just all about me and life was so easy now it's all about um taking care of these little two while also trying to go out and um earn a living you know, it's really nice to hear that you're in such a lovely place now and you, you've been through so much. You've, you've done so well as well. What have you got planned for the future? Have you, do, you, do you plan too far ahead or do you just take it as it comes? Um, I just take it as it comes, really. I would like to eventually get back into coaching. Um, I've obviously taken a back burner on that just to raise my children for the next couple of years or hopefully once they're in, in school um, and settled, I would like that's a goal of mine to get back in. Um, and get my feet on the grass and help the younger kids, really. that's, that's there's, there's always a gap at Watford FC, seems like every six months or so or a year. <laughs> Kelly, it's been amazing talking to you. I find uh, it likewise. totally inspirational. Best of luck with your chats coming up. As I say, Watford FC Premier Network and also the Hearts Chamber of Commerce Women in Leadership. You're a very strong ro role model. It's lovely to talk to you. Thank you. Likewise. This is Hearts.